Hi, friends. I was going back and forth between presenting this video as my top five face palettes or iconic face palettes. When I do top five, I primarily take it from my perspective, my favorites, despite the impact they had on the industry or consumer space, despite people's opinions. Whereas from the iconic perspective, I try to remove myself from creating that list. How did the palette then impact the industry, the consumer space, what people thought about it? What was the buzz surrounding these products? And I went with iconic because I just love a little bit of makeup history not so long ago we'll go back to 2015 where i feel was a fun time for makeup now we're a little jaded and we're just like oh another new release my gosh and the role for these videos as well is to encourage us to dive back into our collection maybe we have one of these palettes or all of them there is renewed spark for these products maybe we dive back into them and also going back to that nostalgic excitement when we first bought it and we're like oh my gosh this is the best thing ever and of course from then purchased a plethora of face palettes that just kept on piling up in our drawers that's me 100% me. So I thought, wouldn't it be fun to identify what I thought were iconic face palettes for the last like seven, eight years, you know what I'm saying? And allow me to make a distinction. I think there are two tiers of face palettes. You have the exclusive face palette housing cheek products, highlight, blush, and bronzer. And then you have the face palettes that have some cheek products all three of those, one or two, including eyeshadow, right? So it really all depends. I'm primarily zeroing in on the all-exclusive face palettes that have the highlight blush and bronzer. There might be a few examples that I'll throw in as like honorable mentions that have the eyeshadow products, but in my mind, face palette for me is Face as well, yes, like if in an hourglass palette, including some sort of setting powder, highlighter, blush, and bronzer. Let's go down memory lane for a second because I thought it would be fun to do a little research and go back to 2015. And remember the Kat Von D Shade and Light palette. That was iconic in that, my goodness, every beauty influencer had that palette and made a video with it. The fact that you had three spectrums of skin tone with the fair light, the uh, medium tan and the deep dark with the contouring and the highlight, and those powders were pigmented. They gave you a lot of punch. And my goodness, there was a time during like 2015, 2016, I didn't even say 2017, where people were obsessed with contouring, making their nose smaller, making cheekbones on their face, all from these types of powders and the shade and light palette was heavily used and I think influenced a lot of people to not just use this palette, but seek out other palettes with a similar arrangement, right? With the highlighter shades and the contouring shades that are not necessarily warm, but leaned more neutral cool to create that true sculpt effect on the face. And ooh, September 2016, the Nikki Tutorials and Too Faced collaboration face palette. That was a total disaster. I don't know if it was iconic. It was um it was a moment where it was revealed that Nikki Tutorials received just a flat rate despite the huge sales that came from that collaboration palette and the palette itself to me in my eyes was not an exclusive face palette. It also had the eyeshadows, but it had blush, like two blushes and two highlighters. I forgot, I had a video. I remember I filmed a video with this palette and also the other part of the, the hoopla was when Nikki filmed her video, the swatches were immaculate, but when consumers swatched theirs, wasn't the same amount of shine, uh, not the same amount of pizzazz that her swatches had. Ours were a little more dull. And then in November of 2016, a few months later, 
the Jaclyn Hill and Becca Champagne face palette. I had this face palette. I think I might have decluttered her. Before that, when Jaclyn Hill and Becca Cosmetics collaborated with Champagne Pop, that was an iconic moment for the beauty industry, 100%. So at the time, Becca was known for their highlighters. I have Becca highlighters, and some of you, many of you, had brought Becca up during my top five or in the comments of my top five highlighter video, and shame on me for not including a Becca highlighter because I truly think, till this day, one of the most iconic highlighter formulas in the beauty industry. Even though we no longer have Becca Cosmetics, the fact that the texture was just this fine, smooth pearl finish. It had more of like a glow, which is what I think people gravitated towards. It wasn't your typical high shine metallic finish that some people do like, but if you want it a little more subdued, kind of more of a luminous finish, that's what the Becca highlighter delivered. And Champagne Pop was just this across the board universal shade, depending, pretty universal in Jaclyn Hill's eyes, I guess, where a lot of skin tones could wear it depending on lower or higher on the eyes. It had like this champagne uh, tone to it. And when Jaclyn Hill and Becca Cosmetics released the face palette, it also featured Prosecco Pop, a new highlighter shade with like three blushes. I, I couldn't stand the format. It was just like this base in the palette because you had the three blushes on the top row and the two full-size highlighter pans on the bottom and you just had this empty space. I'm like, ah! <laughs> I felt like they could have perhaps placed uh, the smaller highlighter pans with like a face powder. I don't I don't remember if Becca had a face powder or one of their bronzers, you know what I'm saying? Or did the palette already have a bronzer? I have a picture up here while I'm chatting, but anyway, that happened in 2016. In May of 2017, Natasha Denona released her sculpt and glow. I remembered filming an anti-hull video with the sculpt and glow on the list of anti-hull products and yes, it is, I think it's still available, I'm not entirely sure, a huge palette, very much not practical I think for a single person. It's more so for a professional, for professional use, but the standout feature of the palette was you had the top row of cream products, bottom row of powder like powder shimmy products, but the top row had the plastic lid on top, so there was no cross-contamination of textures. That was pretty cool. And of course, this palette introduced the concept of Natasha Denona, which she heavily, or more so a technique she heavily relied on. She liked to apply a creamy product first on the cheekbones, followed then with a powder product because she felt that the cheekbones can be dry. And to create that more smooth application that didn't look dry or textured, it was imperative that a user first apply something creamy on the cheekbone and you could stop there because a creamy highlighter is beautiful. It's a little more subdued, a little softer, but because the skin is now moisturized from that emolliency, you then apply the more, in her case, those highlighter textures were more of like a, a scatter, translucent type of a effect in terms of the formula. So it had that beautiful glass skin effect when applied on the cream product. And then we saw the diamond and blush palette in 2018, which I have right here. This is in Daria. I do have citrus. I don't know where she is, but this was the same setup for the Sculpt and Globe. You have the plastic lid here with the cream products, the Glow Cream Base, Cream Blush, and Dual Glow. And then you have the Diamond Powder. And as an example, you could just see from the swatch, there's not a heavy base of color. You just see that beautiful twinkle of shine, which you would then apply over the glow cream base, right? This will be applied on top. So if you wanna take a look, that just creates more of a high impact shine, right? On the cheekbones and you can follow in the same manner with the blush shades and like the topper shades. This is her Glow Extreme that has more of a prominent color base here that I would apply uh, lighter than the diamond powder. So those are my standout notes for iconic moments from 2015 in regards to face palettes. The, these palettes, I thought, made a splash, right? There was a lot of talk surrounding these products, and I wanted then to present what I thought 
were iconic face palettes in my collection. I do have the years next to them just so we could get a little bit of context. So the first palette I want to present, this might be a little bit of a top five bias. This might not be iconic. I don't actually remember the response to this palette, but the packaging, I loved. And that is the NARS Hot Triste Cheek Palette released December of 2018. My apologies for the strange handling. This little guy popped out because I dropped it. I'm a big toe. It hurt. But the palette design, this like edgy, heavy metal, like spiky kind of a thing, and the pan design, <laughs> Where'd it go? As you saw, the pan design reflects the palette design, and I thought this was lovely at the time. I was assuming from the date, this was a holiday palette, which NARS usually releases. They usually release some sort of face palette. And I think you detected the jelly baked formula from this compact, right? The advantage the Jelly Bake Formula has generally is that it's more of a satin finish versus exclusively matte or just exclusively shimmery pearl. And when buffed into the skin, it does leave behind more of like that natural finish where it doesn't look as powdery. And I do believe that skin types that lean more towards dry do favor more of like a sheen based powder so that it doesn't look so dry on their skin. But I wanted to also just pop on a little bit. We have this color here. And generally I do like the color arrangements for this palette. I'm a little broken one here. This is more of like an opalescent finish as opposed to the more like champagne-y type of a finish highlighter, a stronger base of color but I wanted to pop on the more medium pink shades here. And this is Sonia G's oh, soft buffer that is designed to pick up tougher textures like what's found here in the Hot Trees palette. Ooh, but I think the finish of the blushes are just so pretty, especially because since you have a little bit of sheen, it adds more dimension to the complexion where if you don't want to apply an exclusively formulated highlighter, you can rely on this type of like baked jelly texture to provide a little bit of glow, especially here lower on the cheeks without it appearing too textured. The next palette I have on the list is the Natasha Denona. You knew, Na you knew Natasha had to be on this list. The Bloom Blush and Glow Palette. Her first four pan palette. This released in March of 2019. And after seeing something like this, these huge blush palette to have something just far more versatile, practical, and compact, but still delivering Natasha's vision technique when it comes to highlighter and blush. You have the plastic flap here with the cream products. We have two, the Glow Cream Base and the Cream Blush. This cream blush, speak about versatile. One of Natasha's most versatile shades. You can't go wrong with the berry. All right, you shear it down if you want less, you pack on more if you want that intensity, right? And it is so smooth. You cannot go wrong with this color. You could place it lower for more of that flushed effect or higher for more of a sculpt effect. But to have that cream product in with the powder ones. So we went over the creams, you have the Globe, Ext Globe Extreme. And the Globe Extreme formula is outrageously beautiful. Soft, shiny, smooth. It's a lovely consistency. If you want a little mo, you could have the Duo Glow, which is more of like a duo chrome type of a gig, right? It has a stronger base of color. So this is what you would apply maybe lower on the cheeks here. If you wanted to experiment, let's take Sonia's Fan A. This will pick up a little more product than probably we need from the Duo Glow. But just so you can see, you could apply it here and it has just such a lovely effect on the skin. Look at that. You get the pink gold flip. And if you wanted to buff it down more, you could take your soft buffer or any type of buffer brush for that matter and just kind of smooth it out. <laughs> so this had to be 
on my Iconics list. I just think this setup is incredibly easy to use. And the fact that you have several textures in one palette, the fact that you have, I think, a reasonably sized mirror, and you can actually apply a lot of these shades or more so textures on the eyes. I know you are limited in terms of it containing two creams, creams being not best applied on eyes because of longevity, but you could definitely tap on any of the Glow Impact or Dual Glow powders on the lid, throw on a little liner, and you're good to go. So mascara, please, easy peasy. And then of course, I believe the second face palette to be released after Bloom was the Tan Bronze and Glow. The Tan Bronze and Glow, I think I featured on my top five bronzers list, that bronzer. And overall, the palette, Again, with the cream uh, highlighter and another s sort of highlighter situation with a bronzer and a glow impact. One of Natasha Denona's best face products, 100%. And I think she veered off the bloom formula. This was a lot more creamy and in your face. It had a lot more punch versus what you find in her like glam face palettes. Those are a little more low key. It's strange. It's like a spongy, moussey texture, whereas this one is like a, a truer to cream feel for me. And I think just it had more room for shearing out or building up. You know what I mean? So maybe she'll bring the bloom a formula back in another face palette format, or maybe she'll do like Bloom 2.0. I don't know. The Bloom has to come back in some capacity. We are wait, Natasha, we're waiting. Next, you know, I'm presenting this because despite what you think, it always causes conversation. The Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Palette Unlocked Holiday Palette. This was for October of 2018, so my apologies. I was supposed to have put this before the NARS. This is not in order, but it's okay. I remember when the Unlocked release, people flocked to this palette because I think the bronzer, the bronzer color, despite it being very light, 100%. So if you were beyond my skin tone, you could not wear this bronzer. Yes, but I felt there were a lot of medium to the light and fair part of the spectrum. I don't know, there was something about this bronzer color that people just adored. And overall, the color arrangement here was just outrageous. And you had two finishing powders, you had soft light, and filtered light. I will say the advantage the Hourglass palette has over several is the fact that they include a finishing powder where you can use under the eyes, all over the face. Some palettes or many palettes just include the highlighter, blush, and bronzer, which is fine. You could pack a separate pressed powder, what have you, to set under the eyes and rest of the face. I do think it hugely advantageous to have complexion powders in with your cheek products. You just kind of knock out a lot of other stuff you could pack and just bring this for the ride. Not only do you have your complexion powders, you got the bronzer, you have your blush types, and you have the highlighter. The blushes in this palette were more of like the neutral, cool leaning. Yeah, this was more like a plummy. This is more like a blush topper that you place lower on the cheeks. And the highlighter, my goodness, the highlighter texture from Hourglass is outrageously shiny, right? So when this dropped, my goodness, I think it was sold out. You couldn't get it for a while. Remind me down in the comments how that rolled out. But I remember specifically when I used this palette, I was like, whoa, this is pretty. Limited in the skin tones that could use a bra, I mean, th that bronzer in the snake palette for this year's holiday release stops at like tan. I And I think I'm being generous at that. Although I will say that the blush colors from, I got the, I got the barn owl. The blush colors for this year are far more robust than last year's because last year you had like the copper types of blushes or more so the iridescent rose with the marbling, but the pink was still, I felt light for the deep palette. These pinks have punch and yes, the bronzer, although, Sure, this bronzer, I think, definitely 
deeper than what we found here in this palette. You know what I mean? We still got a little while, we still got some to go, but that is the comparison. I still had to present the Hourglass palette in it being iconic with the buzz it creates and the fact that you have, listen, as a reminder, one of these ambient lighting powders already costs you $56. You have two of them in here. So if you were to buy two of these, you're already over the $100 mark. This, at the time, I think retail for $80 or $85. So the fact that you have the ambient lighting, the bronzer, which is $58, a single blush is $45, and one of the strobe lighting powders, the highlighters, $45. And they're all smaller pan that you're definitely not gonna finish in all in one palette. It's it's a it's a it's a good deal. That's what I'll say. So iconic from my financial standpoint. <laughs> okay, okay. This by far one of Charlotte's best darling, and that is the Glow Gasm palette. It was released with Light Gasm. I gave that one away. The Glow Gasm palette and Light Gasm. Glow Gasm actually uh, recently was it a few months ago? There was like a re-release for this one, not the lighter one originally dropped June of 2019. By far, iconic, 100%, one of my personal favorites from my entire collection. You got the bronzer, you got the highlighter, you got these blushy toppers, and this was the palette that I decided to apply on for this video, and I also tossed in the bronzer, this color here on the lid, the highlighter for the inner corner, and some mascara. That's it. And just look at the sheen, man. The, okay, the advantage, like I had mentioned before, these jelly baked textures have, is just the, the smooth finish they have on the skin. It doesn't appear like a powder. It just appears almost like a cream. And you also have the ability to build intensity. As like with some powders that are matte, are so pigmented that just overdoing it will have it appear muddy and you don't have that risk with this type of a formula. I think that's the advantage to using something like this baked formula, but yes, I understand you do need the right brush for a good pickup because it could be like you you got nothing. For example, if I were to use a squirrel brush with this type of formula, I will be here all day. But if I use something like Sonia's brush that's stiffer, and has better pickup, you're gonna get more color on the skin. And in some Fude videos that I have filmed where I mention, listen, you might have that product where you just didn't have the right tool to work with and dismissed it as bad or not good enough, not great for you. But when you had the tool and you were able to use the bronzer, highlighter, or blush that you were never able to because nothing got picked up from the pan, all of a sudden, it became your holy grail. There it is, right at the top. And these textures, I understand maybe someone's concern because they are shiny, 100%. They are shiny, maybe not great all over the cheeks, but I do think lovely if you kind of buff them out, right? And that's what I did. I buffed out the more red color so it could appear not as pearly, but more like radiant and you might be wondering about last year's palette release this is also from charlotte now the advantage these blushes have is that they don't have the shimmer these are truer matte finishes although uh doesn't have the shine they're still baked right and i think that still leaves behind just a smoother finish on the skin but the highlighters in this palette the particles I felt were bigger than the formula that exists in Glowgasm. So this is one of the, the highlighters here. It has nice shine. It wasn't as smooth as this highlighter here, for instance. You know what I mean? And Charlotte also had her instant look in a palette. This also contained eye products, right? But I don't know, man. I gotta give it to the Glowgasm. I don't, I don't care if there's no eyeshadow because I could just use the bronzer and the shimmery blushes for my eye look. You know what I mean? I do think it's monochromatic and it just pulls everything together. The ultimate no makeup makeup look I think is 
is achieved through a face palette like this because when you have the same color that's cutting through your hollows and that's also cutting through your crease and you have a similar or same color on the cheeks and on the lid it just pulls everything together nicely it's classic, it's elegant, it's, it's no fuss, it's easy, and just achieved by using the face palette. You can forego eyeshadow altogether. That's what I do when I just pack along my hourglass palette. I just make sure I got black. Oh. You, you need a liner. Pack the liner. Your mascara, eyelash curler, and or lashes you'll be fine. And the last palette I have for you that I thought was hugely iconic, maybe not so much because this brand, perhaps not as main mainstream as Charlotte or Natasha, I still had to include the Suku Blush Palette 101. This dropped in August of 2020. During that time, Suku blushes I feel are iconic all by themselves outrageous in terms of having a matte formula that still applies just in this feather light smooth way on the cheeks and now to have an entire blush palette with a Suku formula, different than the pure color blush formula and also different from the melting. This I consider to be a hybrid between the two right so you see that there's some sheen there right you could detect that it's not completely like a all matte powder not completely like the melting powder a little bit in between and you have the highlighter shades which is i mean the subtlety of it it's just so beautiful right so you could have more of like a softer glow effect on the cheeks and what I adore about this palette is that you can rely on these shades to create sculpt and dimension without necessarily using something like shade and light contouring or bronzing you can create just beautiful gradient on your complexion with different tones of blush and this is what the suku blush palette delivers and i feel when this release my goodness this was truly limited edition you will have to go on makari or ebay or somewhere if you want to get your hands on this palette and i thought it was an iconic moment because of suku's reputation in regards to blush and now to have an entire blush blush palette <sighs> it had to be on the list 100% and I think I'm going to wrap it up there I could go on and on and choose several more but of course I would love to leave it up to you friends what face palettes were iconic in your eyes I probably missed some totally get it I do want to film a top five Natasha Denona face palette video I have to go through the ones that I own should I make it more strict and just keep it to the four pans or include the face glam palettes that have the eyeshadows as well let me know down below but I thought it was fun to create this video because again I just love perspective and context and remembering what released seven, eight years ago and what we have now, how it compares. And again, just creating that spark for products that I think we absolutely loved, but they got lost in the fray. They got lost in the archives because of the insane consumption and just overwhelming <laughs> new product that hits us every day. And I get it to tackle that FOMO and to say no, to say, hey, that's beautiful, I love it, I wish I had it, but you know what, I have this. And it's helpful also for me because, okay, tangent, as I was walking up the incline at the gym for my zone two cardio, I was thinking, and I had the Hourglass Barn Owl palette on, my beloved, and I thought, you know what, Alicia, who in this gym on this floor right now, who would be able to identify what products you have on your cheeks right now? Would they be able to say, hey, that's the Hourglass palette, specifically what released this year? Absolutely not. They might say the texture is beautiful, the color is lovely, I love the highlighter, I love how it looks. You know how many I love how it looks, bronzer, blush, and highlighter I got in my collection? Several. No one would be able to identify what these products are and that's what i try to tell myself when i'm on the edge of buying another face palette or cheek product bronzer or highlighter 
You know how many great products you already have, Alicia, all just to film a video for it and it's gonna end up in your drawer and you're gonna be stressed about not using it enough because you got all these other face palettes on deck. Hmm. So that's what I tell myself and remind myself that ultimately, unless it's someone who's a makeup enthusiast like myself and they're like, is that the hourglass? But that's it, are you gonna be able to tell which hourglass palette it is out of all the hourglass palettes that have been released since the unlocked one back in what, my gosh, 2018 or prior? Absolutely not. So that's where I stand with that and what I tell myself constantly to keep myself from buying more. But let me know, fam, what your iconic face palettes, what you think are iconic in the makeup industry. I would love to know and I'll see you down in those comments. And until then, that is. A wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, something top five, something iconic. Maybe top five new lipsticks are next. Stay tuned for that. Take care and I will see you again soon.